I hear the ticking of the clock. Tick tock on the clock. Tick tock, get up. Stop, stop to the heart. Tick tock, get up. Stop, stop, stop. Hey there, welcome back to Total Geek Live. Uh, Total Geeks here. We are discussing Doomsday Clock number six. Just came out, and we are super stoked to get halfway through this epic 12-issue uh, uh, maxi series. Um, so let's kind of do... Do we want to do like a little spoiler, non-spoiler area, or we just kind of want to... I think we've always just kind of gone into spoilers yeah, so. with these. Yeah. It's we're talking about it all because our warned. our brain will tangent and go, "Oh, yeah, same. right, yeah." Uh, I, I I think I think especially with these types of reviews, um, it, it, because it doesn't take that long to read a comic, yeah. one issue of a comic. Um, hopefully, people have. Either you know read it, or they're just maybe they can't get access to the comic, and they're looking to us to provide them all the juicy details. So the cover is super cute. Like these marionettes are like really cute. And uh, got, uh, Nixon at the bottom. Yep, and and the Grim Reaper. Grim Reaper. Yep, and the Grim Reaper. Yeah, um, and then I think the 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 lady behind Marionette wasn't she? Um, on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. <laughs> she might have been, yeah. Lady, Lady, <laughs> Lady McLean? <laughs> Is that not Lady McLean? I thought she had a bump on her. <laughs> I think the one next to her is Mr. McFiddlebuddy. Yeah. <laughs> That's Mrs. McFiddlebuddy. <laughs> well, I didn't notice this Nixon. Kyle looks the other way. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't yeah. notice Nixon down in the corner. You yeah. know, that one puppet, she looks like a green version of uh, uh, Phyllis Dillard's character in The Bugaloos. Oh, yes, yeah, she does. Yeah. She's way better than Baba Yaga. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Phyllis Dillard was in The Bugaloos? Yeah, she's the the bad guy. Huh. Oh, um, man, I the more you I know. I just thought they were in the air and everywhere or whatever. Flying high, flying free. So, bring it back to Doomsday Clock, the sixth issue. Oh, yes. yes. Um, Twelve issues, kind of, halfway in. Yeah, it's just kind of the issue we've all been waiting for, or at least for me. Mm -hmm. uh, because now we get the origin of uh, Marionette and, and the Mime. Yes. And it's heartbreaking and amazingly brutal and uh interesting um and it's really kind of neat to kind of see their origin um come to life um in kind of a nice little like uh you know they they've been been friends or together or, or some capacity since they were kids so it, it really is a very strong and deep love, affection, romance um, that's, you know, carried them through their lives. It's how they survived. Um, and it's kind of neat to kind of see that story unfold here. Um, um, yeah, the there, it's very like the antithesis of the Joker Harley Quinn, where these two characters are very much in love, very much live for each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And have a very deep connection. Yeah. So, yeah, it's such a great issue. Uh, I can't believe there's only six left. Mm hmm And before we start going into specifics, you know, I was discussing this earlier uh, with my nephew that it's an amazing issue. He hadn't read it yet, but just he knew kind of what it was about. Mm hmm But we've seen what? Two panels of Superman and, like, Dr. Manhattan, and this is all supposed to be, like, around them and building... They're big. Yeah, and we're halfway through... And still no. It's still really nothing. I mean, right. I love the marionette and the mime and, and their whole story, and I, I love... 
you know, and uh, if they would have stuck to monthly, it still would have been okay. But now that it's gone kind of like bi-monthly from here, it's really drawing this story out because you don't know uh, where is it going. You know, the the yeah. thing that they held up is like, look at what this is going to be about. Mm -hmm. It's not been about that at all. <laughs> I, w I was thinking about that before we got ready for this because it was like, yeah, that, that Dr. Manhattan Superman meetup, the eventual meetup is like the whole crux of the story. At least that's what they presented it as. And I'm like, well, how are they going to resolve this? Is it going to be like two panels? Don't do bad. Okay. And then that's kind of, well, at least we solved it without throwing a single punch or something. But yeah, it, it's that they are so far in the background compared to everyone else. I'm just wondering when they will address that. Not that I'm not having a good time with everything, but yeah, it's just that doesn't seem to be as much in the foreground as I was led to believe, or we were led to believe. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think part of it is the anticipation of it. You know, we've been led to believe and, and thought about, okay, Superman, Dr. Manhattan, it's going to be. And I think drawing it out, like you were saying, Kaiser, monthly on a monthly schedule, not so bad, but when it's drawn out even further, it makes it a little more uh, frustrating to keep, getting little bits but not even the bits that you were expecting to get yeah uh, i mean at least they could have kept what they've done so far and put just seeded a little bit more it just mm -hmm. feels like two separate series almost it's like this yeah. is what it's going to be but until we get there here's a completely different series yeah their destinies are colliding sort of thing you know like you just kind of see like like the ticks of a clock you just kind of see a little bit closer every issue, but you don't even see that. And I, I kind of get it because that's not if the, if it is a physical fight at the end, which I don't think it will be. It will be over instantly. Yeah, and that that's just going to be super anticlimactic, and I'm, I'm curious how they'll do it. But yeah, there just needs to be that feeling they're coming together with each progressive step. And yeah, I don't feel that. Uh, no, especially for me, this issue felt like a one shot. Yeah. It, it did not have it's actually the first issue that did not have the the TV story thing going yeah, on. I noticed that. Mm -hmm. We've had that throughout and you know there there's supposed to be something to do with that that relates to all of this. Um, and that wasn't the case here. Um, we we don't get any kind of flash to over to see what Osmandius and, and and Rorschach and them are doing um, what's going on it's just all about the mime and the marionette and their backstory getting their origins and and all of that and then the Joker and the Legion of Doom villainy yeah. yes okay that, th those guys um, and, and that's it so it's, for me it really just kind of felt like a one shot. Oh, this is thrown in. Yeah, it's this is Doomsday Clock, but it it didn't feel placeholder like Doomsday Clock to me. Yeah, like they pulled away from the the plot and were just focused on backstory stuff and and what the Joker's up to and and all, all and and the bad guys, the DC bad guys. What what's up to there? And Batman is literally asleep this entire issue. Yeah, I, I went back and looked. I wanted to bring that up too, Guy. I was like, that's the most unreal part of the whole thing. Is like they want to unmask him, but they're just leaving him there. Yeah, they're just yeah. all blah, 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 blah. Well, so the Joker, the, uh, you, he would, you think would have taken a peek, but he's all about showmanship. So he has him and he's bringing him to the League of Villainy. And he's planning that there, but they do get interrupted. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but they also bring up the. Uh, I think the Riddler himself goes, "Look, uh, uh, no, or, or no, no. I think it was Two Face that. You know, is that real? Come on, Joker, you've fooled us." Yeah. Before that could be an Arkham security um, in Batman's outfit. You've done this before. Yeah. You, it's the joke on you guys, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We can't trust you. 
I mean, oh, to the point that, like, when Mr. Freeze's goons are like, the Joker off, offers them, hey, come join me. And they're like, yeah, do, do we really want a boss that we really can't one trust or mm-hmm. even know how he's thinking, his thought, thought process? At least with Freeze, we know, hey, he really loves his, de- his wife and, um, and he wants money to cure her. Get, yeah. <laughs> yeah, to, to help her. And so he'll accumulate wealth however he, he wants to, and well, we can pocket a little bit of that ourselves. With the Joker, I mean, dude, he may yeah. just shoot us right in the face. And sometimes he does. <laughs> yeah. That's a great panel where uh, oh. where the mime and Mary and the are there. We're starting at the back and going forward. So let's, let's get back to the beginning. Right. So... Story opens, and we find out that the marionette is a refugee here with her father. Uh, I guess smuggled in through some sort of cop network. But we find out that the cops are dirty and Mm -hmm. are forcing them to pay, you know, protection money or whatever um, every week. And... I guess that mirrors the mime. His family moves in across the street into a store. Mm-hmm. And they either don't pay or his mom speaks up or something. And mm-hmm. they just push her down a flight of stairs. Yeah. And uh, so that kind of you know really drew them together, having a di- that whole issue together, and then it just escalates and escalates and just becomes heart wrenching. Really? Uh, I, I had to take a moment. Yeah. But you, I always wonder, I, I wonder where she got the viciousness. Like, where did mm-hmm. that come from in her to, to be so? Yeah. Well, uh, the bullying, I mean, they only show the bullying once, but was it ongoing, you know? And it's, it's finally like, okay, that, and then the the anger and the hate, seeing her father every week dealing yeah. with these guys. Because yeah. cause he even said, I can't do this in front of her anymore. Because yeah. he he probably saw what it was doing to her. You know, right. she knew what was going on, and she was probably just, you know, people snap. You you hold stuff in, and you hold stuff in, and you let it see theirs, and, uh, yeah, they unleashed it out of her. Yeah, well, that's true. That's very true. And then growing up on the streets after that with the mime and just having to survive, you know, honed in on that. Mm-hmm. That survival skill, right? And I can understand her father's intent. He was probably hoping that, she, you know, she would end up in some type of foster care and go to a better home or family or you know something um, rather than and away from that situation mm-hmm. that he had he had put her in. Um, but um, that wasn't the case, and um, and yet <clears throat> we're still like. One thing that I didn't get out of this was it's not clear if the mime is mute or if just the, the, the events that happened in his childhood, he just doesn't want to talk at all. Um, because there are, psychologically, uh, there are cases of that. I mean, mm-hmm. we've seen it in, in both real life and in other forms of media um, where a character just is mute only by the decision that they don't want to speak because of something that happened to them psychologically. Tommy. Um, mm-hmm. deaf, deaf, blind, blind, deaf, dumb, blind kid sure plays yep. a mean pinball. Mean pinball. Exactly. And that was just from a traumatic yeah. break as a it child. all about. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I kind of feel like we don't need the answer to that question at the moment. Um, I think, it, I hope it does come but if it doesn't, I'm still okay. Not happy. See, I'm, I'm the I'm the exact opposite. We got the marionettes part. Yeah. We got it. Sure. Um, and you know the whole she used the string to get that one cop 
and all mm -hmm. that. So you're you're seeing yeah. her her using her resources. That's what she knows. It's what she grew up with and all that. And so those are going to be the tools that she uses and all that. Um, and not so much with him. We we don't see any kind of manifestation of his power that yeah. he has because I think in an earlier episode we did real we did come to find that the the yeah. gun that he has was real right mm -hmm. um but never in this issue did we get that whole manifest manifestation of his power come to life or or, or whatever yeah. um so that was a that for me that was a disappointment that okay i wanted it to be a little bit more complete since we did get all of Marionette's background and 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 all of that, and I mean, I'm basically, that whole scene of her going after with the the scissors and the thing and all that, I'm I'm, I'm seeing that and I'm just like, wow, it's just her as a little girl, um, but I'm I'm seeing the adult Marionette doing that, you know, like yeah, that, that's it, it was, yeah, well, it. It, that was literally like this is the birth of that character, yeah, right, like this is yeah. where she came to exist, right. <clears throat> and I just didn't get that from with the mind. Yeah, because he he literally just kind of adopts the persona of the second doll, the se right. the second marionette, which was a mime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he just kind of ad adapts into her world and into her as opposed to having really an identity of his own. Right. Because like yeah. I wonder, okay, this just pops in my head. His parents' shop was their glassmakers. Mm -hmm. What if his weapons are like a glass, like a see through? Like, oh, that would be interesting. Like, that would be nice. Yeah. Because you see the you see the weapon and it's like the the gleam and the shine on yeah, it. Yeah, the gleam of it. Yeah, that kind of a glass maker. He can make glass guns and glass. Pop. Yeah, that would be interesting. Hey, that's that's a deduction. You are. Yeah, you you went. Yeah, you went all Sherlock on that man. It just popped in there. Because that makes it better the the Watchmen world. Their powers are fantastic. So it seems outside of Manhattan a little bit more reality based than say like the DC yeah. superheroes. Right. Yeah. Uh, repeat uh, that. They're they're what based? The, the powers of the Watchmen the heroes and villains seem just a little more reality based. They're still fantastical, but they're yeah. not like the level of like Superman or Wonder right. Woman. Yeah, they're right. just really smart and could fall fall far distance, or really <laughs> really good with a weapon and a quip. <laughs> yeah. I wonder, um, you know, due to his not speaking or whatever, I feel like whenever he does speak, if he does speak throughout the end of this, till, you know, for the next six issues, I feel like when it does happen, if it does happen, it's going to be a real significant moment um, mm -hmm. that we get to see inside of him. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm okay if it's delayed a little bit, uh, but I do understand what you're saying, Danny, about that. Yeah, because this, yeah. Yeah, this, this is such the them issue, and with only six issues left, we're hoping it's, okay, now we're off to the Dr. Manhattan Superman arc. Yeah. Right, or somebody else. Some, yeah. You know, let, let's go back to Rorschach. What's going on there? And Yeah, the, yeah the whole uh, Johnny Thunder getting the Green Lantern. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. there's 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 a lot of stuff still to come together and still to even explore. So I think mm -hmm. I wonder. Right. If, do you think this issue and maybe some of the uh, kind of delays that this has happened is that these two characters became so insanely popular that they reworked some stuff to give them this more focused issue there is always that possibility yeah yeah but i think they'd have an overall story arc where they you know maybe they give them a little bit more focus but you know they can't deviate too much because... exactly this because like danny said it feels kind of like a standalone almost like a deviation it kind of feels like they push some Alert. stuff around to like really you know deliver to the fans like okay this like you said 
be, you know, from the moment these characters were introduced, this is the issue we wanted. Right. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. but it, in the grand scheme of things, it's really kind of outside of the, the Joker and getting Batman and the League of Villainy. Yeah, what are they called again? The League? I'm, I'm looking at it. It's yeah. the Villainy. We also have, you know, in addition to all these other, you know, plot balls in the air, we have the metahuman question. The mm -hmm. theory. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, we still haven't gotten a lot of forward progression on. Uh, the back matter of the book talks about, you know, the character Typhoon, who is the villain who's a part of the League of Villainy. League of Villainy, right, Danny? Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to find Yeah. Because Joker says they're huddling up as the Legion of Evil or the Secret Society of Doom or whatever name de jour they've landed on this time. League um, of League of Villainy. That's what okay. uh, Says. I knew it was Riddler. I knew it was villainy. Riddler, yeah. Oh, or the Riddler, yeah. Um, uh, so you know you have that whole thing bubbling up, and you know it. It's kind of hard to understand where this is happening because it's supposed to happen at the end of the year for all the regular DC titles to line up to. Mm -hmm. So not having knowledge of that is kind of hard to figure out what is really happening and going on and how things relate to it. Um, right. And the fact that you have Batman in a wheelchair, you know, bounding gag for the entire uh, issue is a little comical. Um, well, the Joker said, you know, he was drugged with a very specific yeah. toxin. You know, he is out. Yeah. And he no, no, of course. But it makes you wonder uh, during the firefight with... Uh, the comedian who comes in, mm -hmm. uh, what happens to him there? Does who does he get out? Do people take advantage of the bat being there? Well, Robbie says, well, there's a big explosion. Yep. Um, well, I was I... looking at it, and he disappears right after they they ask him, "All right, Joker, who is it this time? Is it an Arkham guard?" And then I, you never see him again in the issue. Right. Uh, it's it's kind of funny that they they you know, put Batman in such an importance in, in the overall before, and then he's, like, just falling asleep, or he's basically asleep, like, this whole issue. The first thing that popped in my mind, I don't know if you remember that 1980s Buck Rogers series, when they had Gary Coleman as a special guest star, and basically Gary Coleman slept, like, the entire episode. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Gary Coleman's special guest appearance. He basically just slept through the whole thing, and I, I don't know why, but that's where my mind went on that. So, uh, Well, see, for me, actually, um, because I just very recently, the, the Batman and Robin animated film uh, where they're on – the big giant TV tray dinner. Thing. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Return of the Cake Crusaders. Right, and um, you know, I think Poison Ivy or somebody was like going to use a, a, a some type. Oh no, his cat was going to use some type of toxin on him, and it, it didn't it didn't work. And that's something that I remember throughout a lot of Batman is is that really none of these villains toxin stuff actually ever works because Batman is always prepared with some type of antidote or, or you know, something he's, he's built up immunity, whatever. So I have always been wondering, is he faking it the entire time? He's like in he that wheelchair. Well, well. I mean, he's that just pretending tough. he's asleep so that he can listen in on what's going on. You know what? Why not get all this intel when all these baddies are together in a room? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I do have to say, I I really appreciate the depiction of the Joker in this series. There's yeah. some writers that write Joker too over the top, or they make him. They make him what? No. <laughs> That just hint of insanity that the Joker always is, and I feel like the depiction of the Joker they have in this is spot on. And and for that matter, all a lot of the villains that they focus on are all the classic Batman rogues gallery, and they look perfect. I mean, they look like the very classic depiction of each and every one of them. Mm -hmm. So I, I really appreciate that level of detail on that. Yeah, yeah totally agree there. Um. 
so when the comedian does come in and you know shoots things to hell and causes all the mayhem there um it's pretty interesting and it's you know i feel like it's the first time he's really interacted with the dc characters Mm -hmm. um and then of course my marionette who who he is um and that's kind of a leads to a very interesting you know few panels with them uh trying to escape and everything which is interesting for that matter Right, because um, I mean, you, you see the mime. He's he's all about go ahead and taking a bullet. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. yeah. For 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 her, and um, and she's telling him, "No, we're in this together. You're not going to leave me. Um, you're, you're not going to sacrifice yourself for me." Right. Basically, mm-hmm. that's happened in my life already. Yeah. I'm not going through that again. Sc- right. Screw you. It's you yeah, and me. You. It's you and me. If if we die, we die together. But we are running or surviving together as well. Right. Because I mean, their whole mission of being in this world is to figure out where their baby is. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're looking for Doctor Manhattan to find mm-hmm. out where their baby's at. I think that's right. what makes the mime and the marionette so compelling as villains. You may not agree with their, you know, their methods, but their end goal, and and if if you can empathize with them throughout the course of this, even though they are evil, even though they are murderous, that's the sign. They they do have a good goal of getting back their child. They're but they're messed up and crazy, and but yeah. you still feel for them. And I I think that's uh, a sign of how well written this series has been so far, and how compelling and deep these characters are, and probably yeah. why they are so popular. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah, totally agree with that. What if the Joker is their missing baby? <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> God, can you imagine? That's that's the origin. They give the origin of the Joker. The yeah. one thing you don't do. Oh yeah. I have, um, looking at the panel, man. I'm interested to see who died in that blast. Yeah. Well, Redler took a pretty nice blast. Yeah, right in the leg. Yeah, he, he's not going to die, but he's, he's he doesn't have to try to riddle who shot him. <laughs> How the hell is this guy? Why'd he shoot me? <laughs> yeah, Typhoon. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I'm just seeing this. The mirror, uh, what's his face? Mirror, mirror Master. Up, yeah, Mirror Master opened up a mirror portal, and what, some dude's diving in. Who's the guy in the green That's and it. yellow... Stripes. I think that's, that's him. That, right? I thought he was the one in green and orange. Oh yeah, who is that? Yeah, one? so somebody else is diving in. Hmm. So that's interesting. I didn't catch that before. Would that could it be the weather wizard? Yeah, it might be the weather wizard. Oh yeah, yeah, I see it. It's like way in the background. Twenty seventeen. Yeah. yeah, well, it's. Well, is yeah, there Mirror another Master has a green hood and an orange right here. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, uh, Sand, no, Sandman, Spider-Man. There's a better shot of him standing next to Mister Cold. Yeah, yeah, I see him. He's got really dark. Yeah, really dark under his eyes. eyes. But it, it, his face is not ringing a bell for me, though. No, and it's not the Condiment King. Not the kite. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Did, I, I think it's do, probably Wizard Wizard. I don't know. That's how I'm going. Okay. With. It might make that makes sense. Yeah. Um do any of you guys know the about the Judge of Owls? That Oh, the Court of know. Owls. They they did yeah. that in fifty two. Uh he was okay. a pretty big um mm-hmm. manipulator of Damian Wayne. The judge, yeah, yeah, um, and then we have you know going towards the end of this uh, issue, we have you know the my marionette escaping, and then of course you know letting their guard down and getting <laughs> trapped by the comedian again who comes in, and then in a perfect classic Joker move, um, 
you know, he does a little hand shocker and shocks the comedian, and you know, we're left with, you know, I love, the, I love his face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's yeah. classic Joker, you know, that yeah. little hinge of. It really is. You're right. Funny but scary as hell, and it has to be both. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, the the question of Dr. Manhattan and I always hurt smile. What's the line? Oh, yeah. uh, he's like, who's this Dr. Manhattan? The dentist? I could use a good dentist. It hurts when I smile. Yeah. <laughs> and he's putting on the little comedian smiley mm-hmm. face. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, Batman is at the very last page. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bottom left. Oh, yeah, he's right there. Chain. Yep, he sure is. He's sleeping. So, yeah, he's faking it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, there we are. Um, it's bat jacking it. And that's a great quote at the end, too, from Chaplin. To truly mm-hmm. laugh, you must be able to take your own, your pain and play with it. Um, so that's pretty pretty good one. But so I feel like, you know, like you were talking about, this story, this issue doesn't really move the plot along in ways that we can Fathom, get. at least, yeah. You know, maybe after this is all over, we we can go back and say, oh, this is because of this issue six and blah, blah. But at this moment, it feels very filler issue, standalone, one-shot type of thing. Not that it's necessarily a bad thing, but it does feel like it stopped the pro- forward progression of the story a little Correct. bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, where you have a complaint where the middle lags, and this is the middle. But it's yeah. and it's it's not lagging. It's an amazing issue. This is some of the oh, best. Oh, absolutely. This is this one of the is best of the things. Best. Yeah, I've read this year. Yep. Especially in terms of character development, it, it's yeah. solid. But this could well, be the calm before the storm, and it gets all nuts from here. Yeah. And the fr- yeah. in the framing, the way that they frame things of like. Yeah, when it flashes back to her marionette as a little girl and her, she's laying down the head and then you see the marionette head. Um, I mean, if you just the artwork behind this and the way things are framed, it's probably my favorite of all six issues right now mm. of just the way things were framed. Yeah. Um, uh, just so, so, so good. Um, and, and I mean, like looking back, I don't know what page this is, but, um, the, the frames of seeing the progression of, you know, her in labor and he yeah. is in jail. He can't be there for mm. her. Um, and uh, it, it's just, that's a, I love that whole page right there. Mm. Yeah, um, that is a really neat page. Really and, cool. Yeah, the framing devices they use are really good. Because um, it while they, if you just look at them, they're, they don't stand out to make a real impact of past, present, past, mm-hmm. da, da, da. Mm-hmm. But when you look at it again, you're like, oh, wow. Like, the progression of the story is re- is solid, and it makes sense in the present and in the past right. together. This whole series right. has done that expertly, yeah. where yeah. everything's just, it's it's a mirror and and the progression it's like this is what happened then this is what's happening now it's parallel but different it's i mean this series yeah. is just amazing so far I it think. is it is really amazing yeah well any final thoughts do you have Before we well, wrap? well it was solid stuff all the way through, it's just we haven't moved for, forward in terms of the plot. My my biggest concerns are they're going to wrap up the conclusion either really quickly or in order for you to kind of figure out some of like, well, what's going on with the heroes, they're going to expect you to kind of read all the DC titles to watch the slow decline until this moment. And It's like, please don't do that. Please just let yeah. Doomsday Clock be its own internal series. Yeah, that, that would be I can, collect, I can collect in a trade paperback and read and get all my answers. Reaffirm yeah. there later. Yeah. Which reminds me, I need to pick up metal. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good Batman voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys 
started looking at the stuff at the end of the comic, but um, I've got it pulled up right here. Uh, the Department of Metahumans Affairs. It's all about the Typhoon character, and it's an assignment approval form from the department. And I noticed his assignment was they said that we believe Typhoon is the department's best chance to infiltrate uh, Kondak and Black Adam's inner circle. So hmm. he was kind of a bad guy going undercover. Like a suicide squad. Right. <laughs> no, and, and they touched on that. Now that he said his... Sorry, you're cutting up. No, they touched... Oh, I'm sorry. You, you said they touched on that. Yeah, so... I mean... The whole reason that the League of Villainy is meeting is they're trying to decide what the hell they're going to do right? because yeah. of all this. And Black Adam came out earlier in the previous issue yeah. offering, you know, Kandak as a haven. Like, look, right. if, you're, if you're a meta, come here, mm -hmm. you know. But there was something shady going on there, so I guess he was typh Blue Typhoon? Blue Typhoon or just Typhoon? Just Typhoon. So, uh, Faker <laughs> goes in <laughs> uh, and is part of a squad to assassinate him, and it goes south, apparently, and he's discovered, yeah. and, like, High tells it. So, that they're all have a lot of animosity towards him. I thought that they're, it's telling so much story in just, like, two pages. Right. About, so like, I'm, what... I'm wondering he's the one that gets shot in the head by the comedian. Mm -hmm. So is there maybe some connection uh, there maybe. or, you know, uh, did the comedian have an, a real purpose intent on shooting Typhoon or was he just, he, he was the first guy. He's like, okay, boom. That's a good question. We'll have to find out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think at the moment he got shot, he was making the most noise. He was like sure. getting all defensive and like, no, let's. Uh. So if right. the comedian wanted to make sure everybody saw what he did. He killed the guy that was making That's the one. noise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway, Makes great sense. issue. Great issue. Yes. Yeah, so Two thumbs up. Doomsday Clock number six. Get your copy now. Um, leave us your thoughts about it. What do you think? Do you, what are your thoughts about Kaiser's amazing theory about the mime? The glass uh, weaponry? Yeah. Uh, I, think that's I love cool. it because he used glass bottles when he was a kid to help her. Mm -hmm. So, dude, you, you may totally be on this. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Uh, but let us know what you think about it. Um, we'll be back again next time they publish. <laughs> whenever that is yeah whenever 2020 that is. Well, 2020 probably keep in touch keep in touch we'll be back again and as always it's all geek to us i'll see you soon bye bye i hear the ticking of the clock tick tock on the clock tick tock get up stop stop to the heart tick tock get up